I'm Ted with TVS Pro here in Salt Lake City. Today we're going to be comparing the BenQ HT9060 and the Sony VPL VW 295ES and the 695ES. I want to mention at the outset that this is not being paid for by any of our sponsors. We're actually authorized dealers for both BenQ and Sony and we do this so that our customers can better make decisions for their own theaters. And I'm Mike Bollinger and I'm also with TVS Pro and I've been in the AV industry for over 25 years. So we're excited because in this new series of comparisons we're going to go a little more in depth. We'll be doing things like fan noise comparison, uh, we're going to take a look at gaming applications, we're going to take a look at 2351 as well as contrast brightness, color gamut, HDR performance like we've done in the past. Here we have the Sony 295ES, which is also representative of the 695ES for our purposes. The, there's three key differences between the two. The 695ES has lens memory, which allows for zoom and focus memories for different aspects or sizes of screen images, as well as it has a lens iris, which will help with contrast in your darker scenes. Uh, it's not going to make much of a difference in a, a bright scene because it's going to be full open. Uh, but the other difference it has is the 695 is 300 lumens brighter. Uh, this is what the remote looks like for uh, the 295 ES. This is the input jack panel. Uh, we've got a LAN port, uh, two HDMI inputs. We've got 12 volt trigger IR input and RS-232. Um, as well as the USB port, which I believe is just for servicing only. One of the things we wanted to see in this comparison, um, this is the Sony that Mike just talked to you about, and over here we have the BenQ, and we're very anxious to see how these two compare both in black levels and in color, as well as a couple other things that we'll be looking very detailed into. This is the BenQ, the new HT9060. The inputs are similar to the Sony. As you can see, it's a little bit larger overall than the Sony. It's about 10 pounds more, uh, but inputs are very similar. We have our network. We have our IRN. This does add a VGA input. Uh, we have our HDMI HDCP 2.2 input. We have our HDMI second input. Then we have our USB. This is a mini for updates and for service. Then we have our we have two 12 volt triggles tri <laughs> triggers. And then over here we have our RS-232 for control. Now behind this panel over here, I'm going to open this up. This is, if you don't have the remote right with you and you just want to turn it on or you can get into the menus, everything from right here, this is the remote control. Um, different than the Sony, this does not have a motorized zoom lens. So the Sony has motorized zoom, shift, and focus. This one is, uh, you can probably see on top here, if you can go a little bit wide, we've got two levers. One is for vertical shift, lens shift, and one is for horizontal lens shift. You've got about 60 vertical and about 30 horizontal. Um, the lens is all glass. It's a very good lens. We'll take a look at that later. But it is not motorized, so keep that in mind. So this does not have the controls on the remote to control the lens, but just about everything else is there, including some features we'll talk about a little bit later. As you can see, we've got both projectors. This is the Sony and that's the BenQ. And we've split the screen using some optical dividers so that you can get a better close-up of the center of the screen, which is where we'll be concentrating. To measure the actual peak brightness of both projectors in HDR, both projectors are in HDR. This disc, which is a marvelous disc from DVS called HDR10, allows us to set up HDR so that we're going to get the maximum amount of detail. Now I'm going to turn the blinking off so that we can see, I turned it off, I want, there we go. So this is now showing us the amount of detail we can get in the highlights because if we just turn the contrast up and measure the projectors, that's not realistic in terms of brightness because you're not going to get a good picture. The other thing that affects the picture is if I go into my color temperature, we're at D65, where it's been calibrated, but I'm going to go down to D55. This should look yellow-orange to you a little bit, and that would not be fair to the Sony because whenever you make the, the image warmer, you give up brightness. That's why calibration usually, to get true D65, gives up some brightness, which it does. So we're going to go back to D65, 
and we're in high lamp mode. And Mike, show them what happens when you adjust contrast. So as soon as you go take the contrast, uh, where we found it uh, from the manufacturer's settings out of the box was at about 50. And if you go back up to 50, you'll see we lose a lot of detail in our highlights. Um, in fact, we've you know lost pretty much all of those boxes there. Uh, not all of them, but uh, they're you know pretty much to about here, and then they you know you can see from there on. But these are pretty much all gone. So adjusting that contrast is important when you're setting up a projector when you're calibrating, so that you can make sure that you're not losing details in those highlight areas. So we'll yeah, go back and put that set back, it back up. to where we had it. Um, it's interesting. You'll note that the the um, so the, the two things that we need to make sure that is the same if we're measuring and comparing brightness is that number one, the white balance point is the same, which they are now. And number two is that the grayscale level at, on the clipping on the high brightness, which is your contrast control, that those are getting the same amount of detail, which they are. So now we're just going to double check to make sure they're both in the bright mode. So I'm going to go down that in the Sony, the bright mode is under cinema black. And as you can see, it's in high. And Mike's going to go down to the light mode in the BenQ. Uh, and it's in normal, which is its brightest mode. And the Sony's in its high mode. So now we're going to measure the brightness. And I'm going to do that on this uh, DVS HDR10 disc, which we're using for the HDR parts of this comparison. It's a, it's a wonderful disc. We're going to go over here to dynamic contrast because it has 100% of the white. And now we're going to measure just using a light meter so you can see where they fall. And, and this is always interesting for us because this is coming in right at 49.3, uh, 49.2, and over here. This is the BenQ. It's coming in at 44.644. It's 44.7. So they're within a few foot candles of each other. And yet, the BenQ is rated at 2200 lumens, and the Sony is rated at 15. The 695 is rated at 1800 lumens. So if it had a new lamp in it, right now it would be a little bit brighter, theoretically, than either projector. To understand how a projector rated at 1500 lumens and a projector rated at 2200 lumens can be so different in their brightness, in terms of calibrated color in HDR, let's take a look without calibration. Now this is in the silent or the less bright mode on the BenQ. This on the Sony, let me grab the remote so you can see. The Sony is in cinema film, and where you adjust the lamp is in cinema black, and it is in the high mode. The middle is the contrast. We're in the middle contrast, but we're in high lamp mode on the Sony. So that's as bright as it's going to get. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to show you the 2200 lumen mode. So we're going to put the BenQ, I'm going to pull up the menu, and so that you can see it, I'm going to move our divider over. So we'll go to picture mode here, and we're going to take it out of the lowest silence mode. We're going to take it up to the bright mode. And when we put it into bright mode, you should see a significant difference. And then we'll take a measurement so you can actually see the difference. I'm going to turn the menu off on the BenQ. And just to make it more like it was. We'll put the divider back a little bit so you can see we're two separate pictures. And again, uh, over here on the Sony, we should be, uh, we're 43, 44, 44. And then we'll do that same thing over here on the BenQ in its bright mode or its brightest mode. And we are getting 80.3, 79.8. 78.4, as you can see. So significant difference, 78 or 80 versus about 43, 44. Now that we've got the Sony in the full bright mode, we wanted to measure the sound. So this will be worst case scenario. So 
So it looks like we're falling between 35 to 38 decibels. We've got the BenQ now uh, in its highest lamp mode, and we're going to take a measurement to see where it falls in terms of sound. So it looks like it's a little definitely quieter than the Sony. Now measuring just the ambient noise of the room. But what we're finding is, is things like Blu-ray players, receivers, some of those type of units have fans and in some cases are just as noisy uh, as the projectors are. So both projectors are very quiet and really are not going to cause much problem in your room. Before we actually measure the black levels, we have to make sure that we're reproducing the details in the black. And as you'll see, this makes a profound difference on most projectors. So right now, as you can see, both projectors, turn yours on, Mike, we're at, the, out of the box, the contrast, excuse me, the brightness is what we're setting now. Brightness is actually the blacks, contrast is the white. So we want to set brightness, and the way we do that is with a pluge, and in this case an HDR pluge pattern, again by DVS. So I'm going to start bringing mine up and Mike's going to start bringing his up because we want to be able to see, uh, now you're starting to see these bars, do you see these bars across here? They're starting to appear because we're bringing up the black level and the detail and we want to be able to see all the way down to 0.5 if we want to see all the details in the blacks. So now that we have these both adjusted the same, so we're just barely seeing the 0.5 bar, we're going to get maximum detail in the blacks. Let's see where the blacks are. So over here, I'm going to measure under the 0 IRE, between the 0 and the minus 5. And I've got this and this, the Sony, let's actually put the probe up here. The Sony is coming in at 0.02. And over here, if I measure under the same uh, 0 0.5, we're getting 0 0.03. So, uh, well, it just bounced up to 4. Let me hold it here for a minute because when you're in this low light, sometimes you have to let it. Okay, so it's bouncing between 0 0.03 and 0 0.04. So again, about 1 to 2 one hundredths of a difference. But can your eye see it? Yes, absolutely. Now that we've adjusted the black level to reproduce detail down to zero IRE on both projectors, and we've already done the contrast um, with the white clipping, we're ready to play an actual HDR scene. This is also a scene that is on the DVS HDR10 disc, but in terms of evaluating black level, this is amazing. So I'm going to put this in motion and we'll talk a little bit about it. So for me, the first thing I, I see, both have about the same amount of detail because we could see that in our, our black level pluge patterns. Um, but because of the color difference, which we won't get into right now, but that's the biggest difference I see. Um, both of them have, amazingly enough, very similar black levels. But the Sony can go darker if you're willing to crush details. And I'm very anxious to do this on the JVC to see where they are now that we have an HDR calibrated Pluge pattern to do that with. So we're going to freeze this for a minute and so you can actually look at it for a second and see any differences. So one of the great things about HDR is we can hit very bright highlights but at the same time we're getting detail in these dark background and there's actually shingles along this roof line here that you can up, up here we can actually see some of the detail. What do you see over there Mike? Uh, they look, you know, both really good. It's, it's amazing to me, like, just to, to see the amount of difference in brightness, though, even there. Uh, I would say that the sparkler looks a little bit brighter here on the BenQ than it does on the Sony. Um, you're also seeing more of this halo or lens flare, whatever that is, um, here on the BenQ versus the, the Sony there on the right. Um, but they both are doing a really good job. Um, I, again, I think the biggest thing that, that I see the difference in there is, of course, the wider color gamut. So now that we've adjusted both the um, blacks and the whites, we can do some measurement of black. So to do that, we're going to go to, with these settings, we're now going to go to some scenes and actually measure them.
So now we've put a predominantly black scene, and even in the case of the 695, it may start to use a little bit of an iris here, so if anything, its blacks would be a little bit better. Uh, but we have enough highlights that it's, it's not going to be all the way open. And over here on the Sony, in standard dynamic range, in blacks, we're getting a reading of 0 0.02. And over here on the BenQ, we're getting a reading of 0 0.0. It's bouncing between, let's let it settle down, between 0 0.05 and 0 0.06. So I still see that the Sony looks a little bit better. Yeah, the BenQ areas, on these dark, dark scenes in standard dynamic range has a little more, I would call it milkiness. Is that, are you seeing that? Yeah, yeah, I would it's say just, it, it's, a, it's a little bit milky. But again, that's side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, it's still awfully good. Yeah, I, I would say that if you were to see these in two separate rooms and walked out of one room and into the other room, you would probably have a hard time seeing yeah, it. Yeah, I would, I would probably uh, agree Because with that. by measurement, we're talking about 0.02 to 0.03 difference in the actual black levels. But in reality, both of these are now in the low mode. The projectors are very, very quiet. We can't even hear them. Um, and they're what they call whisper quiet. And um, looking at the images, they're both spectacular. The other thing we want to look at in uh, dark level, black reproduction, is pure black scenes. We've looked at, uh, and we'll look at uh, low level scenes, but we want to look at pure black. So I'm going to start this and we're going to pause it when we get into pure blacks. And as he turns around, he's going to be filming a night scene and we're going to pause this when it gets on the Eiffel Tower. You should be able to see some of the differences. And I'm going to let Mike, who is our, one of our screen experts, kind of tell you a little bit and show you what can be done. So uh, first off, uh, in case we didn't mention, this is a Stuart uh, Studio Tech 130. So it's a white screen with a gain of 1.3. Uh, and if you look at the two, initially you'll notice that, oh, the Sony has better black levels, richer, deeper blacks than the BenQ, which is here on the right. Um, and, but there is something that we can do about that if we, if we wish. Um, one of the things that we can do is use uh, a high ambient light rejecting screen, and now you can see that, oh, all of a sudden now we're able to get those black levels like we uh, have over there on the left. Um, and we can also... Uh, use that uh, in the picture to gain overall higher contrast. Now this is a slate material by Screen Innovations. It's a great material and uh, one of the things that uh, this material was designed for, which is a high ambient light uh, rejecting screen, is designed for situations where you have a lot of light. Maybe a room with windows, maybe it's um, not a dedicated theater room, but a media room or a room with you know windows coming in, and and it's designed to help re retain the contrast that we want with ambient light. But the other thing it can help is it can help with black levels, as you can see here with the two. When we pull up this the the full screen, we now have black levels that are that are getting much closer to what we have on the Sony, but yet we still retain a lot of the brightness and and some of the highlights and the other things that the the BenQ had. Um, going for it. So as long as we have a screen uh, or a projector that is bright enough for this, the type of size that we're looking to do, a high ambient light rejecting screen can be used to also improve the contrast even in a black room. Now that goes even further of course if we use it for the purpose that they were designed for and we have a room with high ambient light, now you can see the difference in black levels Oops, if I get out of the way. Uh, there's no comparison in terms of what our black levels are. Uh, and so a high ambient light rejecting screen can go a long ways to getting us the contrast in a scenario where we really can't control or we don't want to have to control the, the lighting in the room. So now we've put in our DVS HDR10 disc and as you can see, well, we'll show you the settings. The Sony has now gone to the HDR mode. And as you can see, at 42, if I go higher than that, as I bring this up, you'll start to lose these bars. And we want to go to 75%, which is 1,000 nits, which is where we usually put our uh, projectors. And uh, we're rolling off. Um, this is still quite good, and then it rolls off after there. And then um, we want to make sure 
that we're getting all of our color. So we're going to go down here to color. That 49 doesn't quite give us the detail. So we're going to bring that down. You can see as I'm bringing it down, we're starting to get our colors go across. And we want to make sure that the color space on both projectors is in its BT2020 or its widest range, widest gamut of color. So on the Sony, that's down in expert settings. And as you can see, it's in BT2020. So on the BenQ, uh, as you can see, it's already switched over to HDR10. And um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, just go down to the light mode, and I think the light mode should automatically go to Smart Eco, which Smart is its Eco, most yeah. efficient and gives you the brightest. So with these both set up for contrast, black levels, and color, we're ready to uh, color clipping. We're ready to actually take a look at some scenes. And fortunately, on this disc are some incredible scenes. Again, this DVS HDR10 disc, if you do any calibration, uh, is very helpful. And there are some kind of hidden menus, so you have to go to the next page, and then you will find these wonderful uh, still images, but they were shot in high dynamic range. So uh, as you can see, both of these are giving us a great picture. Um, <laughs> really amazingly close. I, I am really surprised that these two projectors that are two different technologies can look so close and similar. As we go on to the next scene, uh, this is one of my favorite scenes because at the same time um, you've got these uh, really great deep shadow details in here. You've also got some highlights, but you've got this incredible range of colors that occur in nature. And uh, Mike, what differences are you seeing in the color on this one? You know. Um I'm noticing that the reds are maybe a little bit deeper, richer, um, or maybe not richer as a word, but maybe a little bit different color, um, simply because it has a wider color gamut, um, and they're probably a little bit closer to, to what was found in nature. And so I would say the overall color, uh, you know, kind of depth or width is, is a little bit better there, but they're both very good. They're both, both close. Uh, I would say in terms of details in the shadow areas, both of them hold up really quite well. I would say the BenQ does look a little washed out in comparison to the Sony, simply because we know the Sony has really good blacks. Yeah, these are those um, deep velvety blacks that you strive for in home theater. But in terms of some other things to notice, uh, the BenQ does really good at the highlights here on that uh, address or that number. Uh, it looks a little bit brighter than, than the Sony does, uh, as does the uh, highlights in the sky and in the top of the trees, uh, and also a little bit noticeable in, in the rocks here. This is a, a really good high dynamic range shot to be able to see some of the detail through the windows, even those shutters, and then also to be able to have detail in some of the brick and the dark areas of the frame are in there as well. And then this is one of my favorite scenes because this lets you see in very vivid color what high dynamic range does. Um, they're both really good scenes. Sony has what they call their triluminance. This is 127 percent, according to Sony's specifications, uh, of Rec. 709. So it is wider than 709. It is not P3. On the right, the BenQ is actually doing P3. So we're going to take a look at a couple of scenes where we really want to evaluate color, uh, especially color space between the two. Um, this is a scene from Mortal Engines, which has some of the best high dynamic range. And it's one of the few movies that was shot in 8K and mastered in 4K. Even a lot of the digital effects were mastered in 4K. So this scene, they're just coming out outside. You can see this great brightness coming in. And, and you're just coming from a dark scene. So when you actually watch this, and uh, it, 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 it's just like you went outside. It, it almost hurts the eye. So I'm going to roll this, and we'll talk a little bit about some of these scenes, but they're coming out. Um, you can begin to see some of the differences live here, especially as those flowers pop. There are some differences in the skin tone. They're both very good. You know, I'd see one, th there's definitely no question that the BenQ is brighter. And overall, the, the dynamic range looks, you know, I, th I would say better than the Sony. 
however, there's there's a few things. Obviously, Sony does great with some of the shadow and black level details. And I would say it looks maybe a hair cleaner in terms of noise. Um, and part of that's probably due to the scaling that we mentioned um, or that we looked at a little bit earlier. So we're going to take a look at a couple of scenes from Guardians of the Galaxy 2 because it is one of the films that has the best use of wide color gamut that I've seen so far. So we're going to put this in motion and I'm going to freeze it in a couple of places. Okay, so live, Mike, what differences are you seeing there? Uh, well, first off, the red just looks significantly brighter. Um, it looks, the Sony, the, the red, besides being darker, the, it's a slightly different color. Um, but the biggest thing is just in the overall intensity of the red. So the reds are different because the color gamut is wider. We'll show you the test results on the actual um, charts in just a minute. Uh, but uh, the brightness helps the color, but it's also a different color, so it's pretty significant. And then we're going to skip ahead here in this scene, another one from Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Kurt Russell and his girlfriend are in the forest and he's explaining um, this plant he's planted and what I wanted to show you is we're going to freeze this and The brightness will definitely come through But hopefully some of the color will come through because one of the things we've noticed with wide color gamut is the effect It has on skin tones. It's amazing. So the Sony is very good very accurate But when you see the two side by side that wider color that slightly better HDR or whatever they're doing because uh, again, we have, we have calibrated both of these. They're the same 6,500 degrees, and they both are clipping at the same levels, which is slightly over 1,000 nits. Um, but here, the wide color gamut will show you a little bit more of that uh, rich skin tone. Okay, here we have frozen. This is when that alien is attacking, and he breathes out these color gases, and the colors must have just had a ball with this because they took advantage of the wide color space that's available now in the releases of UHD. It's not only 10-bit, but it has this huge color gamut that they're able to actually put on the disc. Here comes Groot. He's walking around, and then we're going to see some wide uh, color spewing on the other side here. We'll see if we can capture some of these. So here they both have that purple, but it's just richer and more detailed. And I think we've got some, yeah, some greens that are coming up and some blues. So there are waves of color that we're seeing over there that we're not seeing here. They're both very good, but that extra wide color gamut is very exciting. The other thing I would probably, uh, that's worth mentioning is some of the sparks and things that are flying that are these multicolored uh, sparks that you're seeing here in the picture. We're seeing them on both. Uh, but, of course, not only is the intensity look brighter on the right, and so they're much more noticeable, but also they're different colors. So the, the, they're just colors that the, the Sony can't quite reproduce, and so as good as it is, the, the BenQ does look a little bit better on those. Okay, we've put uh, this scene from Mortal Engines. We wanted to revisit this and actually do a measurement reading because the thing that we found very interesting as you saw, several of the HDR scenes actually look significantly brighter on the BenQ, and yet when we measured the peak brightness in the past, previously in, in the a HDR mode, it didn't measure brighter. So we wanted to do that again. Uh, this is the brightest part, uh, or one of the brightest parts of the scene, and if we hold it up here, um, we are getting a reading of 25.8, 256 25, 3, so let's call it, uh, you know, 25, 2. And if we do that same thing over here and measure the Ben Q in that same bright part of the image, we're getting 23, 2, 23, 8, ooh, almost 24. So about a foot to a foot and a half difference in brightness according to measurement, but to the eye, these HDR scenes have looked brighter, and we think that has to do with the HDR processing that BenQ's been working on. We love this HDR. They're both excellent in terms of giving you a bright 
vibrant image, but we think it has to do with the wider color gamut is giving you the appearance. Um, I mean, things just pop a little bit more, whether it's the flowers or the phone booth, but it just looks brighter to the eye. And I think that's that uh, Hemholtz Rolhaus effect where if you have pure color, which the pure LED does, it tends to make it brighter. But I also think it's their curves that they've used for their HDR. This triangle here is the D65P3 triangle. So this is wider than Rec. 709. And as you can see, Sony is able to reach 80% of the P3 color space, which when we change this to the BT2020, you can see that the BT2020 space is much wider and that 80%, which is of P3, now drops to 57.8% of the BT2020 color space. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the color space of the BenQ. This is one of the areas we were most interested in learning about because it is pure red, green, blue LED and has that expanded color gamut. So here uh, the triangle represents, and I should mention this is CalMAN software that we're using, um, and the the triangle, the lighter triangle here represents Rec. 709, and we're in the vivid mode, which is its wider color mode. So you can see now the red is way beyond Rec. 709, the yellow's beyond 709, the green is way out here, the cyan and the magenta. Um, they're not uh, exactly on their targets because this is not the triangle that uh, P3 is. So we're going to go up here to P3, and you can see the white balance is very close to the Sony uh, in terms of the blacks are, are almost dead on and the whites are just slightly off with more time those could have been brought in more but we're gonna go here to but they're about the same so we thought that was good uh, we're gonna go down here to P3 which is the next wide color gamut and their uh, specification says they can do 98 percent of P3 and we're very curious to see where they fell and we with this basic calibration, we're able to get 96.8. So I would say their specification is very close to accurate. Um, we couldn't pull the magenta quite down, but you'll see when we go to the 2020, um, that's kind of where you want to be for 2020. And they're, they're shooting for P3 in. Uh, and, and you may have wondered why uh, it's important that those colors be mapped by the projector to the proper color space, because now, here we are in 2020, you can see that the magenta is hitting its target, it's right on the edge. We're still good on white balance. The yellow is, is almost to uh, BT2020. The red is not quite there. The green is, is good, but not quite there. And the cyan has a little ways to go. And the blue is very, very close. So we get a color gamut with inside of BT2020 of 72.9%. So now we're gonna be concentrating on detail and what you actually see in terms of sharpness through the lens, through the panels. In the case of the Sony, this is a three chip design, uh, SXRD. And in the case of the BenQ, it's a single chip um, with the red, green, blue flashing. So DLP. DLP, thank you. So as we look at this, um, they both have absolutely amazing detail. It pops a little more, and you should see that just because the extra brightness that the BenQ is able to do, even though when you measure a white field, it's not showing it. But this is not HDR material, by the way. This first, first look at color is just putting them both in their best color modes and in their brightest mode, the Sony is still in high, the BenQ is in its smart, uh, eco. smart eco. Thank you, Mike. So we're going to roll some of this and we'll freeze it at a couple of places to take a look at some of the detail. Um, this particular footage uh, was supplied to us by Sony and is really good for showing off very high detail. Um, you will still see some of the color differences, but in, in this case, there's a couple of scenes that we want to look at, specifically the detail and the comparison between the two. This is going to go to a shot here that we're going to freeze in just a minute, and hopefully some of this detail difference will come across because we're recording this in 4K, and if you can watch this on a 4K monitor, you should be really good. Now, this is something really interesting because I was seeing this difference in contrast, 
and I thought, well, where have we got the Sony in terms of their contrast? As you'll see, we're in the high mode. We've got the contrast enhancer off, and I'll show you the reason why. This is low, and this is middle contrast enhanced. This is high contrast enhanced. So from what I've seen, I'm not sure what exactly they're doing, but I would not run the Sony in high contrast enhancement because it actually, and, and if you look particularly in this area here, when I switch between high, middle, low, and off, off is definitely the better contrast range, but we're still, and I believe it's the all glass lens that we're seeing. The, the BenQ has got one of the best lenses I've ever seen. There is no chroma aberration on the edges, even on white text, there is nothing. I've spent some time on the Sony to align it. They've improved their lens over the years, but this is not the same as an all glass lens, and it shows on some of these scenes to be able to actually see the fine detail. And both of these do an exemplary job of being able to reproduce and see the detail of this city. So some of these colors are within the range of both projectors. As we get into some of these deeper greens, we can see a difference. Again, we can see a little difference in the way they both handle HDR. Um, and as they pull out here, there's another great scene. It's a wide shot that has more detail of the city right there. What observations are you, can you see, Mike? Um, you know, the Sony does a really good job. I'm, I'm looking at the city, but also in the mountains. And I'm, in some cases, I think there, I'm seeing a little bit more detail not detail, but maybe um, in terms of highlights and shadows and things like that in the mountain. Uh, but in terms of overall detail, um, I would say that the BenQ maybe looks a hair sharper, but they're both really good. Yeah, the detail here is incredible, and, and I'm just looking forward to more meet, um, movie releases being mastered in 4K, not up res to 4K, but actually mastered in 4K. This is also a great example of the high dynamic range on both units because we have these very, very bright highlights up here with full sunlight hitting them. And then down here in the shadow areas, um, especially on the Sony, these black areas are very, very dark. And that's one of the advantages the better blacks give you is to bring out that detail. But on the BenQ side, you can see the extra brightness of its HDR their curve that they're using, as well as a little bit more in the color in some of the green areas, just make it pop a little bit more. Don't pay attention to the motion. We're just analyzing uh, color at this point, and we've done brightness and contrast, but yeah. we will do motion a little So I'm not seeing, yeah, of course, we're not seeing any of that motion that he's talking about. But if I'm understanding correctly, that has to do with the speed of the camera shutter that we have to set so that we're not seeing any artifacts with the DLP color wheel. Is that correct? Right. And with your eye. Now, Mike is one of our um, people that is very sensitive to color wheel. How has it been on the BenQ? Uh, it, generally speaking, I don't really notice color, um, any kind of rainbowing or anything like that with the, with the BenQ DLP. Uh, from my understanding, from a technical standpoint, part of the reason is, is because it's red, blue, and green LED, and they're able to sequence those LEDs uh, because there's no color wheel. Uh, instead, they're sequencing those red, blue, and green color wheels, and they're able to sequence those much faster than they can spin a color wheel. So they're really, in, the, in terms of video and, and artifacting and things like that, there's really not, at least for me, not any noticeable rainbowing. You know, once in a while, like when I'm standing up here, I'll catch a glimpse of a rainbow off my watch or something like that. But in the picture, I really don't see it at all. And the term I was looking for is true cinema. And we've got the Sony in true cinema, which gives you a very, very good 24p, uh, which is what most movies are shot out presentation. And so does the Ben Q. So to wrap up HDR, we're going to take a look at a feature that the Sony has called IMAX Enhanced. If the disc, and this is uh, one of the titles of IMAX Enhanced, is called Journey to the South Pacific. And IMAX has developed a process where they're using their years of experiences in very large screens in reducing the noise, making the image as absolutely sharp and crisp as possible. And we're going to take a look and see if we can see any differences. So we're going to go to one of the chapters here. And we'll comment as we look at these to see any differences. And I'll freeze it in a couple of places, because this was kind of a surprise for us. So I'm going to freeze it here. 
And what are you seeing, Mike? So uh, at first look, they're, they're both very good. Colors, overall brightness looks pretty similar. But upon a little bit closer look, if you look at the difference in the mountain, um, or this island here, and these smaller islands, there is a significant amount of difference in the amount of detail between the Sony and the uh, BenQ. Uh, specifically, the Sony ha is showing a lot more detail, a lot more information, it looks like, than what the BenQ is doing. And it's not only in those island and those land locations, but if you also look at the ocean here on the coral or whatever, um, there in those shallow areas, you can see a lot more detail there that we just are not seeing here in, in the, so, in the uh, BenQ, or it's just not as pronounced. And, and I would definitely agree, there is more detail here. And this is interesting because in most of the other HDR scenes, the BenQ looks significantly brighter. Now it's not looking so much more brighter, although we measured and they're very similar again, but I am seeing more detail. But I also, on the BenQ, I'm seeing colors that we're not getting over here. But that has nothing to do with the, the IMAX uh, enhanced disc. It has the color, because obviously you're seeing it there. That has to do with the color gamut. Move this forward a little bit. Uh, they're now going to go underwater, and we're going to take a look at some coral. Now, it's interesting. Uh, in a shot like that, it's really just texture in the coral you see. And of course, you can see a little difference in the blue. But as we come up on this coral, I'm going to freeze this. So we wanted to show you up close really what the difference that we're seeing is uh, on the IMAX enhanced disc. So on here we're looking at the BenQ. This is one of the coral locations where we're seeing so much of that difference throughout the picture as well. But this is very easy to see that difference. Here inside the coral, you'll see kind of this white area. And that's really all you'll see, maybe some shade or gradient differences there, but that's about it. Uh, and we'll look here at the Sony, and there's quite a bit of a difference. Okay. So here we're looking at the Sony with the IMAX Enhanced. A couple of things that I want to focus on specifically is there is more information. Uh, it's not just subtle detail, but there's actually more going on within these coral areas. And if you look at the difference, it's almost kind of like the veins or the, the cell structure of the coral uh, that you're seeing that, that is just missing there in the BenQ. Okay, we're going to take a look at some of the gaming and the millisecond delay difference between these two projectors. Uh, we get requests from gamers, and we understand that, how important it is in terms of response time. Now, uh, also, uh, to show that response better, we've changed the shutter speed up. So on the right side, you will see some color banding that is not visible to our eye. That's something between the camera shutter and the reproduction of the DLP with the sequencing of the color. Um, on the Sony, just to show you, it has a special game mode. And we've put it in the game mode, so that's its fastest. From everything I can tell online, there is actually a difference of about 25 to 35 milliseconds. Now, to give you that, some of that perspective, a thousand milliseconds equals one second. So we're talking a very small fraction of a second difference. Um, visually, we're having a hard time seeing it, but I know to serious gamers, they really want to be under that 25, 30 milliseconds, and the very best gaming projectors, which are not 4K, have gotten down below 20, but that's very, very rare. Um, my son's playing this game. Say hi, Bubba. Hi. And so he's actually doing this live right now. Um, and you'll also notice that these projectors are, uh, we didn't calibrate in this mode. So uh, neither the Sony or the BenQ in this mode uh, have been calibrated. So don't, we're not judging color or detail. Uh, and again, um, the, the lines you are probably seeing on the right side, that is not in the image. That is because of the camera capture, and that's a very difficult thing to do. But I wanted to speed the shutter up. If you've ever watched your TV and noticed that, although you're fitting the sides, you may still have letterbox or bars above and below the image. The reason for that is, is up to 80% of the movies, the most popular movies that you watch, are in this wider aspect. And that's really a creative decision just uh, done by the people that are creating the movie. And that's the way that they intend for you to see that. When you go to the theater, you're seeing it in that wider aspect. 
But when you're watching it on a TV, there's no way to stretch a TV. So in order for them to allow you to see everything that they wanted you to see, they have to letterbox it in that way. Well, the beautiful thing about projection is, is we can actually watch it in our home the same way that they want you to see it in the theater. There's a couple different ways to do that. The best way to do that is using an anamorphic lens. And what we do is electronically, we're going to stretch this so that we're filling every pixel and using all the brightness that our projector has available. So depending on the projector, that's going to change which aspect mode you put it in. But that's going to basically stretch the image electronically and keep everything that we're what we had in the image. But we are, if you look at people, they're going to look kind of funny because they're stretched the wrong way. So an anamorphic lens would then be put in front of the lens, uh, something like this by Panamorph or another uh, anamorphic lens manufacturer, and that would allow us to stretch it back out to fit the proper image while retaining the same height as we have in 16 by 9. The other thing that's kind of funny that we've kind of thought about a lot is a lot of times you watch movies or, or uh, you know, and movies are not filling the whole image because of this wider aspect, but yet you're watching television, sporting events, things like that, that a lot of times are not, you know, in as high a resolution maybe as the movie, and yet we're getting a larger image. Well, by allowing to do CinemaScope, now when we're watching movies, we can get the largest image possible and really take advantage of everything that the projector has to offer. The way that we would do it here in this BenQ is we would zoom it out and then refocus and realign the image to fit the screen. So we're going to shift this down. And that's why the memory on the 695 is a significant feature because you are zooming, focusing, and shifting usually to get it to match both the 16 by 9 and the uh, soup, the CinemaScope wide picture. And with the, like you mentioned with the Sony 695, that all can be done with a simple press of a button and, and get you there without having to do all the manual adjustments that we're doing here with the BenQ. But watching a movie in, in this aspect, in this 240 or CinemaScope format, gives you an entirely different experience than watching it in 16 by 9 with Letterbox. So, what did we learn and, and what have we discovered about these two projectors? So, we want to have some conclusions before we do. I want to uh, thank you for watching this video, but also to let you know that if you're ever in Salt Lake City, where TVS Pro is located, be sure and give us a call or drop in. We'd love to show you a live comparison or if you have questions or to meet with you. Um, we are a sales company, so if you have questions, feel free to call us, email us. We'd be glad to help you. I'm going to ask Mike to kind of give his summary of the two, and then I'll give you mine. Now that we've had time to really dig into both of these projectors and see what they could each do, uh, really pleased with how both of them uh, came out. Uh, talking about the Sony first, both the 295 and the 695, which are 295 represented. Again, the difference being that the uh, 695 has an aperture uh, on the, or not an aperture, but an iris on the lens and uh, is a little bit brighter than the 295. But both projectors performed very well. Uh, excellent contrast, black levels were phenomenal, uh, good colors overall, uh, and, and nice and sharp images. Uh, they're both lamp-based projectors, which in comparison, uh, I prefer a laser projector where possible simply because your overall brightness is going to be more consistent over time. And of course, there's some other features there too. But both projectors, very good options. Uh, and I do like the, the capability of having a uh, motorized zoom lens uh, for focusing, for setting it up. It makes it a little bit easier. And with the 695 having the lens memory, that's really nice. Uh, looking at the BenQ, uh, the colors are just hard to beat. The, the BenQ offers phenomenal colors, as we saw in the videos. Um, you know, excellent reproduction there, especially in high dynamic range. It just did a really, really good job. Um, and I think overall, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of good things that the BenQ has going for it. It seems to be qui the quieter of the bunch, but both are really quiet. Um, one other thing that I do have to point out with the Sony that I forgot to mention is the Sony with the uh, IMAX Enhanced. That did offer a significant difference over the BenQ when watching IMAX Enhanced 4K Blu-rays. Um, 
Aside from that, going back to the BenQ, again, because it's a solid state projector, uh, we have more consistent, you're going to have more consistent brightness over time with less drop off. Um, so you're going to get the brightness that you saw, you know, for a long, long time. There's no lamps to replace or anything like that. Um, it, it's a little bit bigger physically than the Sony. Uh, I did like the size of the Sony a little bit better. Uh, but those are kind of the, the, the biggest things that I can say in terms of that stuck out to me with those two projectors. So the BenQ, um, one of the reasons I really wanted to look at it was because of the claims of the color. And it did bear up to its 97, 98% of P3, which gave us spectacular color. I had heard about the lens. I saw for myself that is uh, the best lens I have seen on a projector in terms of chroma aberration. There is just zero. And center to edge sharpness was amazing. So the color lived up to its promise. The lens exceeded my expectations. Now, it, it is not a um, motorized lens. But on the 295, it's motorized. But that doesn't really help you in terms of the 235 to 1 or 24 well, cinemascope. A wide picture, but you'd have to go to the 695. Now, the 695 is $10,000. The uh, Ben Q is $89 or $9,000. So you got $10,000, $9,000, and then $5,000. So for the price, the Sony is really amazing and did very, very well. But of course, it's lamp based. So you will have to either replace those lamps every year or two if you want to keep the brightness up and, and have it recalibrated if you're critical about color. And that's one thing we love about the solid state projectors. Uh, the other thing I'm going to mention is we will be adding, hopefully in the next month, a portion of our website that's devoted to demo projectors, which are these projectors that we're able to demo in our showroom. And um, we can turn them over about every six months to a year, depending on the manufacturer. So we're able to, to pass on a very low hour um, projector that is new with full warranty and uh, we'll be offering that on our website. So again, thanks for watching and uh, also on the Sony, I did not expect the uh, IMAX enhanced experience and the information that is encoded on the disc to come through as well as it did if the display product has that capability, which the Sony does. So that was a pleasant surprise. We we're very glad to see that. So again, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.